It's that time of year again, it's vision board time. Okay, vision boards work, they are powerful. And if you feel like they've never really worked for you in the past, then maybe it's because you're not fully doing it right. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything that you need to know. What a vision board is, the science behind why vision boarding actually works, all of my best tips for how to make a vision board properly and how to make it work for you. And lastly, I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step how I make this fancy little vision board just the way that I did it. Of course, this is not required but it is really cute and it is really fun. So I'm gonna walk you through step by step. So if you want next year to be your year, then keep on watching. Hey friend, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jills and I help women step into their power, tap into their divine feminine and become their best self, live their dream life. So if that's something you wanna do, you should subscribe and stick around. And in case you want more from me besides just my YouTube videos, you can also check out my deep dive feminine energy course or any of my other digital products like my best-selling Notion templates. They are all linked down below. So in case you're totally new to vision boarding, a vision board is a collage of images as well as sometimes words and affirmations that symbolize your goals and dreams and intentions for the year. So one person's vision board can look drastically different than another person's vision board because it's all very dependent on your own personal goals and the things that you want to manifest. Now, let me tell you the science behind why vision boarding works because it's not just about cutting out a bunch of pretty pictures. It's about hacking your brain to focus on what you want and start operating in a different way so that you can bring those desires into real life. So first of all, the most obvious thing is that a vision board kind of serves as a constant reminder of what you want and what really matters to you. Because because you're looking at this vision board every day. If your goals are not front and center, then oftentimes they just kind of go to the wayside. We tend to deprioritize them. Other things start to take over and we kind of forget about them. And then we wonder why we've struggled so much to bring them into reality. Whenever you want a change or a transformation or a level up in your life, it requires focus. So the first benefit to a vision board is that it keeps you focused. But besides that though, we all have something in our brain called the reticular activating system system or otherwise known as RAS. And this basically acts as a filter in our brain that decides what is important and what's not. So basically like what to focus on, what to take note of, and what not to. Because here's the thing, our brain is taking in so much information all day, every day that we can't possibly notice all of it. It's literally impossible. We actually only really consciously notice a small percentage of it. The classic example of our RAS in motion is, let's say that we're thinking about buying a red car. We decide that, yeah, we really want a red car. And then all of a sudden you start noticing red cars everywhere, driving down the highway, in parking lots, in ads. Now the number of red cars didn't just dramatically increase overnight, but what happened is that your brain or more specifically your RAS decided that it wants to notice it. It decided to deem red cars as important. The same principle applies to your goals and your dreams. When you create a vision board and you look at it every day, you are telling your brain, hey, this, this is important. This is something to focus on. And your RAS kicks in to help you filter and find ways to turn this into reality or to help you notice opportunities and resources that align with what you want even if they have always been there. It's like giving your brain permission to focus on what you want. The cool thing about this though, is that this is all happening in the background unconsciously. You don't have to really do anything to turn this mechanism on other than to stay focused on the right stuff. And lastly, vision boards tap into a very important part of the manifestation process, and that is mental rehearsal. Your brain really doesn't know the difference between imagining something really vividly and actually living it. So when you use your vision board to picture you in your dream home or thriving in your career or on that glamorous vacation, you're literally training your brain to believe that it's already happening. And that is how you create the reality you want. You know it's already happening. And so you act, you think, and you live according to that. Now let's talk about how to make a vision board that actually works. So before you start, before you start doing anything, you need to get clear on what you want and be thoughtful about it. A vision board is not a place for just some cute pictures that you saw in a magazine. Those pictures have to mean something to you. So before you even get to the vision boarding process, you really need to sit and think and decide and journal on what you want and not just what you want, but what you want to focus on. Like a lot of times people's vision boards just don't really work because they're just too general. They're not personal enough. They're not meaningful enough to them. Like if you're just cutting out this picture of a pretty home because you like it and it's some cute inspo and then a picture of the beach and then the word courage, that's not going to do anything for you unless that is directly tied to a goal or intention of yours. So you need to know what you want. I highly recommend you get clear on 
all of this first and write it all down first, whether it's just on a big piece of paper or like how I do it in my Notion template. I like to do it on there because I just like the way that I lay it out, but that has to happen first. Now, like I said, the more personal you can make these photos, the better. The more real you can make these photos, the better. For example, if you wanna manifest a new apartment, okay, but what kind? Is it a high rise? Does it have floor to ceiling windows? Is it modern? Don't just put a random picture of a house on there because you wanna move. Put something on there that speaks to you. Find something that's really close to what you want. Find a picture where you can go, oh, that, I can visualize myself there. And something that I did for my vision board last year was one of my goals was that I wanted to grow on YouTube. And I think at the beginning of the year I was at 200,000 or around there, but my goal, I put it as 400,000. Now this is not a screenshot of when I hit 400,000. What I did was that I took a screenshot of where I was at around 200,000. And then I went into Canva, which I'll show you guys later. And I basically just changed the number on my subscribers. I put 400,000. So I could really see and imagine myself having that. Like to me, this, just feels so much more real because this is what I actually saw when I hit that number. Like if you can find the right photos or even edit them to make them more real, like it just shifts something in your brain and it feels so much more powerful. It makes it feel like it's already happened for you and it's so much easier to mentally visualize it. Now with that said, not everything on your vision board has to be like super specific. I like to do a little bit of a, a mix of both, like a mix of some really specific photos that are like, this is what I want, this is what I wanna achieve, this is what I wanna have, etc. Like having this many subscribers or moving into a new home or having this much amount of money in my bank account versus also just having some photos that elicit like a very strong feeling of how you want to feel. I actually have a crazy vision board story and I didn't even realize this until like a month ago, but one of my biggest fun goals for the year was that I wanted to travel and I wanted to go on like a really fun, romantic Europe trip in the summer, but I didn't really have like specifics of what I wanted. I didn't really care too much. Like it wasn't like, oh, I need to go to this specific country and this city and stay at this hotel and do this exact thing. It was more of just like a general experience and feeling that I wanted to feel. So I went on Pinterest and looked for some photos and I just found some photos that elicited that feeling of like luxurious summer Europe trip. Like I didn't even know where these pictures were taken. I just added them because I liked the vibe. So like all these ones up here, this was like my little Europe section. Like this was kind of what I was feeling. This was my travel section. And we did end up going to Europe. We went to Italy and Switzerland and a quick stop in England and it was an amazing trip. But one thing that I realized just a month ago was that I stayed in this exact hotel in the Lake Como, Italy. This was not intentional, but I stayed in this exact hotel. Like I have a picture of that pool. I laid by that pool. What are the odds of that? And I even showed my husband and he was freaked out. He was like, what the heck? And not only that, but we also did a boat ride off the coast of Italy that took us through this same like rock formation thing. I thought this was in Cabo for some reason, cause I've seen pictures like that from Cabo, Mexico, but no, we went on a boat ride that went through that exact same thing. The pictures are not as cute because because it ended up being gloomy and rainy. But still, this is all a great example of that reticular activating system at work in the background. You're not even doing anything. Now, another super important tip when creating your vision board is to stay aspirational, but still within the realm of reason. And what I mean by that is if you're trying to manifest your first home and the picture you put on there is an 8,000 square foot high rise penthouse all decked out with like an infinity pool and a jacuzzi. I mean, that's really cool. But do you actually believe that that is possible for you? Like in the next year or so, because if you don't actually believe that it's possible for you, then your brain is not gonna treat this like a vision board. It's gonna treat it like a little art project. Your brain isn't gonna take this seriously. When making a vision board, you need to be able to feel what all these things feel like. So if you're so delusional to the point where it just like feels completely out of reach and feel silly like a joke, then that's not gonna work. It's not really gonna benefit you. Stay aspirational for sure, but within the realm of reason where it still feels like, oh, this can happen for me next year or like very soon in my life. Because in order to manifest, one of the most important requirements is that you need to believe that it's actually possible for you, that you could actually have it or else this will just be a funny little art project. Remember next year, you can crank it up even more, pump up those aspirations even more 
more. It doesn't all have to happen at once. Now, some other tips of advice is that your vision board doesn't have to be just all pictures. You can also add on some like meaningful, powerful affirmations if they mean something to you, as well as like singular words, as long as they truly mean something to you, like they're symbolic to you. And I really encourage you to not overdo your vision board with too much. I think it's better to keep it on the simpler, more focused side. I think sometimes people want to try to include everything on here, like every little single goal that they could possibly think of, but then it just becomes too scattered. Like your focus and your efforts become too scattered. It's better to focus on a few more meaningful goals that really, really resonate with you, that are really important to you, rather than having too many images on there and wanting to manifest 25 things all at once. In my opinion, it starts to kind of dilute the power of a vision board. So be intentional about what you choose to put on there and really journal about what your priorities are. Now, another thing that I think is really important, I don't think that you should have your vision board, like see your vision board as like, this is my yearly to-do list. I think it kind of ruins the vibe a little bit and ruins the fun of it. Like not everything on your vision board has to be like, oh, I must finish this by the end of next year or else because that's just so stressful. And honestly, I think that's a little bit controlling. And when it comes to manifestation, I think it's really important to like trust the process and trust divine timing. So I like to think of my vision boards as like not necessarily this has to be my 2025. It's more like, I'll have this soon. Not like 10 or 15 years, but I'll have this soon. And lastly, a little fun tip is that you can make a mini version of your vision board and use it as the wallpaper on your phone background. I do this sometimes and I'll show you really quickly at the end how to do this if you're interested. So in a little bit, I'm gonna show you guys how I make my vision board step-by-step step, like on canvas and everything, like it's really cool. But I first have to quickly mention how to actually use a vision board. And what I mean by that is that your vision board is not meant to be something that you create and it's very beautiful and you're all excited about it and then you just set it and forget it. I cannot stress enough the importance of putting your vision board in a place where you will actually see it and look at it every day. I put mine on my like main shelf in my office and I see it throughout the day multiple times a day, but you could also put it on top of your dresser. You could put it on the wall by the door, or even if you want it a little more hidden, I think you can also put it in your closet, like in a really cute place, not just like thrown in the corner of the closet, but in a really cute place because every single day you, go in there and get dressed and that can be a great spot as well. It doesn't matter where you put it, but the power of a vision board happens when you actually look at it and feel it every single day. That's what primes your brain to manifest and create that reality. This is a big mistake people make. They put all this effort into making their vision board and then it just goes in the closet. Don't do this. And that's why I like taking a little bit of extra time to make a vision board that actually feels very beautiful, feels very put together, very polished, almost more like an art piece because it just looks so beautiful sitting out. And like, I want to keep it out and I want to look at it every day. That's why I love to make it this way. It just feels so much more put together to me. So with that said, let me walk you through exactly how I make my vision board on canvas like this, but I'll also walk you through really quickly a cheaper option. That's an alternative to this if you don't want to do this. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do after you get clear on what you want, of course, is you're going to start Start looking for images that align with your goals, your dreams, your intentions, the things you want to manifest. Images that are actually really impactful and meaningful to you. And in my opinion, the easiest ways to do this is on Pinterest. So just grab some tea, light a candle, set some good music, get on Pinterest and just start scrolling. Find things that really speak to you and are symbolic of what you want to manifest. And just be specific about what you're searching for and try to search for different things. And a little pro tip, especially with Pinterest, is if you add on the word aesthetic to whatever you're searching for. So like, for example, new apartment aesthetic, it tends to come up with cuter pictures. Other places to find photos are of course, Google images. But besides that, sometimes I'll get a few things from stock photo websites. And the stock photo websites I go to are either Pexels or Unsplash. And don't worry, I'll, I'll link all of these down below in the description box. So you don't need to remember them. The stock photos are good because they can be really, really high quality, but they're usually not as aesthetic. So that's why I tend to lean more towards the Pinterest route. Even though Pinterest photos tend to be a little bit lower quality. I still like the vibe of those better. Now, once you have a bunch of the images that you want to add to your vision board, don't worry, you can always get more later too, but make it like a little folder on your desktop, on your computer. And then we're going to start putting this 
this vision board together digitally. And we're gonna do that through canva.com. This video is not sponsored by Canva, but I have used them every single year to make my vision board. And all you need is the free account. So you do need to like log in and sign up for it, but you only need the free plan. So there's two different options that you can do. You can either do the canvas like I have, or just printing out a poster board. And then you can put that poster on the wall or you can frame it to make it look a little bit better. Now, obviously the poster option is a lot cheaper. For me and where I live, the poster cost me about $15, $16 around there to order, whereas the canvas cost me around $68. So it is definitely an increase in price, but I do think that the canvas is just so beautiful. I think that it really just looks so polished. So to me, I spend the extra money for this, but maybe for you, you just want the poster. So I'll show you how to make each one. So basically you go to Canva and click create a design. And then if you would like the poster option, you just type in poster and I would choose, there's a lot of options. I would choose poster, landscape, and then whatever size you want. So I believe my old poster was 20 by 16. It was pretty big. So then you just click this option. However, if you want the canvas like me, then you'll go to canvas print landscape right here. I mean, there's different orientations that you can do. There's like portrait and square and stuff like that. I like the landscape. So I go to canvas print landscape right here and I click it and it'll start creating a new design for you. You really wanna choose before you put together the vision board if you're gonna do the canvas or the poster because they are slightly different sizes. So if you decide you wanna switch later on like I did, then you have to kind of like redo it and make it fit the like poster board or the canvas. So it's better just to decide early on. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit upload right here and then you're going to upload all your files. So you're just gonna upload all the images that you found. So I'm just taking canvas photos right here as an example, but then you're just gonna add them to the vision board and you're just gonna play around with adding them to wherever you want them to go and kind of organizing them. So this was my vision board for this year. I haven't made my new one yet, but I'll show you just kind of like what the completed vision board looks like. It's just like a bunch of random images put together. Um, and I really recommend organizing them kind of by section. So this was more of my travel section, had like my business, I had health, um, this was for like having a good evening routine and this was kind of my like luxury section as well as like friendships. So that's kind of how I organize it, but I recommend putting it in groups and not having them all just like random, a health one up here, then over here. I think it's just a little bit easier on the eyes and easier for you to, for your subconscious to realize like what you're focusing on. So once you're like, yes, I like this, this is what I want, then all you have to do is get it printed through Canva. So you just go up to the top right here, you press print with Canva, and then you are going to click the size that you want. I did small because that fit perfectly on my shelf. Um, I really liked the way that it looks. This is the small size. I wouldn't do any smaller than this because then it's kind of a little too small and you can't see. And then you can add a frame if you want, but I just did this mirrored one. Um, it doesn't really matter. It just basically stretches the canvas out to cover the side. And yeah, for me, it's around $68. And then once you click continue, what'll happen is it's getting it ready to print. And it's basically telling you that there are a lot of low resolution images on here. And that's because like I got all these from Pinterest and stuff and that's just the way it is. Like they're just gonna be low resolution, but honestly, especially on a canvas, you don't really notice it. So I wouldn't really worry about any of this. I just ignored all of this and I just pressed add to cart and then check out. And that's how you do it. It's really simple. And it's the same exact process if you do it on a poster board. It takes about a week or two to get in the mail and then it's yours. Again, this is not sponsored by Canva. I just really like using this method. Now, real quick, if you wanna make a mini version of your vision board for your phone background, I highly recommend it. It's like a fun little addition. You again, just make this through Canva. You click create a design and then you type in phone wallpaper and then you just make like another little mini version of the vision board that you already have. And then you just go to the top 
top right corner and click download. You download it to your computer, you send it to your phone and that's that. Let me know if you guys plan to make your vision board like the way I do. If you do, I really hope that you like the way that it turns out. I really think that you will. It just looks so polished and so beautiful. But of course, some people love to do it the more traditional way where you go through a bunch of magazines and print out pictures you love and glue it on a poster board. There's no wrong way to do it. This is just the way that I like. It's almost like a little art piece for your home, but it's all wonderful, whatever way you decide to do it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you enjoyed it and got value from it. And I will see you next time in my next video. Bye.